Hello everyone. In this video, we will be learning about masala bonds. Okay, so before we go on to masala bonds, let's understand what are bonds. So there is an issuer of a bond and there is an investor. So the issuer basically issues a bond and the investor gives in the investment. That is, he buys the bond. Once the investor has bought the bond, the issuer will then give to the investor coupons and the maturity amount. So in simple terms, you can understand this as the issuer is issuing bonds. That is, he is taking a sort of a loan. He takes a loan from the investor. Now, once the loan is taken, the investor will obviously get a return on the loan, which is, as you understand, interest payments. That is the coupon of the bond. And, the, and obviously, eventually, the issuer has to repay the bond to the investor. That is the, in the principal amount. And he will get the principal amount back, which is called the maturity amount. So this is a simple way of understanding what exactly is a bond. Now, then next we come on to something which are called offshore bonds. What are offshore bonds? In offshore bonds, bonds are which are, let's say we are talking about India. They originate in India, but they are issued for people of the rest of the world. So they are not for people of India themselves, but for the outsiders. Now, offshore bonds can be of two kinds. One can be the foreign currency denominated bonds, which means that India issues bonds either in dollar terms or euro or whatever other foreign currency that the which depends on the country that India is targeting for the bond or generally dollar, which is a universally accepted currency. Now, on the other hand, offshore bonds can also be rupee denominated bonds. That is, India launches bonds for foreigners so these are bonds for foreigners but are denominated in rupee terms so that is what we mean by offshore bonds there are two kinds now so let us let us first now understand what are masala bonds so they are rupee denominated debt instruments issued in offshore markets to investors so what do we understand so what have we seen here so first of all they are rupee denominated right secondly they are issued for offshore investors so if if um, investors so let us say you are sitting in india and you want to buy a masala bond you cannot do so because they are only targeted at people who are sitting in offshore markets that is abroad but the settlement happens in dollars so this is another feature of masala bonds the settlement happens in dollars we'll understand more about what this means but a little bit of history before that uh, this a similar name was used earlier in the world uh, china issued something called dim sum bonds and we have kind of taken it from here because these bonds are also issued outside of china but were denominated in renminbi so now we're doing the same so three things to be remembered they're rupee denominated they are for offshore investors but the settlement happens in dollars so IFC issued masala bonds for the first time in 2014. They issued a 10 year, 10 billion Indian rupee equivalent, that is dollar 163 million in November 2014. Why did they issue? First of all, to increase foreign investment in India. That is what we are doing because if the offshore people, people sitting in let us say US are buying this bond, effectively they are loaning that much amount to India or to somebody sitting in India and which means we are getting foreign investment in India. And obviously, consequently, we are mobilizing international capital markets because these bonds are launched in international capital markets. So we are leveraging or utilizing the international capital markets as well. Now, the masala bonds mark the first rupee bonds listed on the London Stock Exchange. Okay, now let us understand where does the risk lie. So generally for all bonds, the interest rate risk is borne by the investor. Now, what do we mean by this? So simple terms again this is just for your basic understanding we can understand investor as somebody who has lent us money right now he is lending you the money at a certain interest rate right let us say the interest rate is equal to r now let us say in the market the interest rate increases so now let us say the bond was initially issued at 10 percent and now after some time the interest rate in the market increases to 12 percent now what does what does this mean this means in a way you can understand that this investor is now you know in, in a less profitable position because he could have lent at a higher interest rate 
which means that it it is it is beneficial for him to sell the bond and then invest it into another let us say bond or any other instrument because now the interest rates have risen which means that if everybody starts to sell the bond so there are more sellers in the market than buyers it would mean that the price of the bond would fall so which means so the entire risk because of the interest rate is being borne by the investor because the price of the bond which is dependent on the interest rate is will change and that is in the entire risk which the investor is bearing similarly if the interest rate were to now decrease to let us say 8% suddenly everybody will say oh this was a very great instrument you know it, in this we were getting a return of 10% so the price of that bond will increase now in case the price increases the investor will benefit if it is decreasing obviously he will uh, be in a sort of a loss so this means the entire interest rate risk is borne by the investor always in this particular kind of a bond now what about fx risk there is also something called an fx risk which will depend upon whether the bond is dollar denominated or rupee denominated now here we come on to the other thing that we talked about we said that the bond is rupee denominated now what exactly do we mean by that now let us say simple example so this is your investor and this is your issuer so the issuer is issuing let us say bonds worth rupees 100 so what is the initial transaction that is happening the issue, the investor is giving to the issuer rupees 100 now he is okay let's and then after that the issuer is giving to the investor coupon payments and the maturity amount so let us say whatever and he is going to ret return some money to it let us say in total he is returning 120 rupees so now dollar denominated would have meant that this 100 rupees and uh, 120 rupees would have been in dollars but in this case it is rupee denominated so it is in rupees but the eventually the settlement is in dollars what this means also is that the investor is sitting in let us say usa now he has he has nothing to do with the indian rupee so he eventually will have to get his own dollars convert them into rupees and then buy this bond i'm just talking very to very simplistically just to make you understand so please don't take this literally but the investor needs to get dollars convert them into rupees and then pay give to the issuer and similarly when the issuer gives him 120 again he will have to convert it back to us dollars to make it usable in his country let us say we are talking about usa or in general the world you know us dollar is a global currency now let us see where fx risk lies so now let us say this is the exactly the case that we are talking about so the investor was supposed to get rupees 120 now when he invested let us say rupee was let us say i am taking simple numbers was rupee was basically 50 rupees was equal to 1 dollar so then when he was initially supposed to get back 120 rupees this means in dollar terms how much was he supposed to get back it was 120 divided by 50 these many dollars he would have got so which is equal to 2.4 dollars now let us say the interest rate changes the rupee depreciates and it becomes 60 that is rupee dollar is 60 rupees which means now how much how many dollars can he get for the same 120 rupees 120 divided by 60 which is equal to 2 dollars now you can see earlier he was getting 2.4 dollars but he is now because the because of the rate of uh, exchange rate changed he is now getting only 2 dollars which means he is at a loss so this means but the issuer he is not gaining or losing he was earlier supposed to pay 120 initially when the exchange rate was 50 let us say this is when the bond was initially launched and when finally after let us say one year he is paying back the money he is still paying rupees 120 so he doesn't he doesn't care what the interest rate does the exchange rate does but this guy sitting here cares very much whether the exchange rate is 50 or 60 because if it if this changes he would have built in all his calculations at a rate of us dollar at 50 rupees but once the exchange rate changes and it becomes 60 rupees per dollar he his return in terms of us dollars changes so which means that the fx risk in this case is in this masala bonds case is lies with the investor if it is rupee denominated and had it been issuer if had it been dollar denominated it would have been borne by the issuer you can work this out similarly i am not going to go into this right here but this is in masala bonds both the risk interest rate and fx risk lie with the investor now what are the benefits of masala bonds what are the benefits to the corporates that is people who are investing first of all it leads to diversification of bond portfolio 
so obviously it's a new instrument so it is it leads to diversification lowest risk as earlier suffered losses on um, you, you know offshore bonds as rupee depreciated now as i said if your bonds are dollar denominated the losses of rupee depreciation or any changes in the exchange rate amount will be borne by the issuer but not in this case because these are rupee denominated bonds the 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 or any risk related with the exchange rate of the currency will be borne by the the investor now it lower cost as interest rates may uh, be lower in many countries which is in fact the case you may know that in most of the foreign countries the advanced countries like us or the eurozone countries the interest rates are much lower than india so you can sort of borrow at a much lower rate so this is also a benefit for the corporates and it provides companies a larger investor base to tap which is obvious because now you are targeting the entire world so this is what the corporates stand to gain from this what is in it for india again you are tapping international savings for domestic investment so um, you know we all we always talk about foreign investment into the country so this is being achieved by these masala bonds then there is deepening of bond market which would help further issuances so there is something called liquidity let's not get into much detail but it basically means that you have more and more market for your financial products which is the bond which would mean if you know if this bond is a success so the country can launch further such instruments and further issuances will be held now it provides visibility and sets a benchmark for yields in future issuances so this time and they will say look this is what this is the yield that we got this is you always have an example past example of successful instrument launches and it shows the confidence of international investors in the economy and the currency so the international investors will say that yes india you know if, if if this bond is successful people buy this bond it shows that people have faith in the economy of the country of india and also in the currency of india now similarly what is in it for the investors investors get a chance to bet on the exchange rate so in this case like i showed you there the one thing is that the risk the exchange rate risk the exchange rate this is exchange rate risk lies with the investor but this also means that any call, if 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 it moves in the favor of the investor then they stand to gain now this is an exercise you can just work out that if there there is an appreciation of rupee the investors will gain appreciation means that currently let us say the 1 dollar is equal to 60 rupees and if it appreciate it will go to 40 rupees or so basically this number is going to reduce so whenever there is an appreciation of the exchange of the rupee you will see that the investor will gain so you can work this out and they generally get higher returns than the domestic country because like we discussed here the let us say in uh, in us the interest rate is 2% i am just taking fictitious numbers and in india it is 10% and let us say the bond is launched at uh, somewhere in between let us say 5% so the everybody stands to gain this guy who would have got investor would have got 2% in his own country is getting 5% they sure we who would have otherwise if he would have issued a bond in india he would have had to pay 10% interest rate is now paying only 5% so that is what the investor stands to gain so this is basically all about masala bonds thank you